And then there's the so-called Gospel of Thomas, which some scholars think is first century. I think the best scholarship actually puts the Gospel of Thomas in the late second century, around the year 180 AD in Syria. The Jerusalem church in the 300s said this, Let none read the gospel according to Thomas, for it is the work not of one of the twelve apostles, one of the three wicked disciples of Mani. Mani was a man who started the Manichaean religion, kind of a heresy. So there are these three writings attributed to Thomas, Gospel of Thomas, which is basically a list of sayings of Jesus, some of which are the same as in the New Testament, some of which are 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 mm, p- plausible, but I'm not sure, and some of which are just bizarre. And if you have any interest in this, please click on the link in the notes with this podcast. Click on that link to the Gospel of Thomas, and you can see my take with some good quotations. And then there's the Infancy Gospel, and there's the Acts of Thomas. But certainly he did not write any of these documents. Well, in conclusion, what attributes of Thomas are worth emulating? That's where I want us to, I don't want to just to, to stimulate you with a bit of history. I want us to think about this man, because I think he has something to show us. Even though there's so little information about him, we see courage. He certainly displays courage, as we saw in John chapter 11, when Jesus is going back to see Lazarus. And if the later tradition is correct, he showed great courage, even willing to preach to the point of being martyred for the faith. Another thing that we can observe and even emulate is Thomas's insistence on evidence. And I'm not saying we should stubbornly reject the testimony of faith of, of others who are following the Lord. But Thomas really wanted to settle his questions. He wanted to be certain. And the Lord gives him an opportunity. He doesn't commend him for doubting. He actually challenges him uh, to stop doubting. And and Thomas responds appropriately. He, he worships Jesus as God, as Lord. And then Jesus tells us that we who don't have the direct eyewitness, empirical testimony, we're to be commended when we believe. But Thomas's insistence on evidence, I think, resonates with so many people in our generation. They're not willing to believe just because their parents or grandparents believe. They're not willing to believe just because it's in the Bible. They need a bit more. They need someone to talk them through uh, the issues. They need to read a good book of evidences. And if we work through our questions, uh, it can be a good thing. And this is where doubt is a good thing. Uh, Like cholesterol, there's good doubt and bad doubt. The bad doubt we wallow in, we make an excuse for inactivity or for unbelief. But good doubt actually impels us to search more deeply, sincerely seeking truth. And so... With Thomas, we see his courage, his insistence on evidence. I also suggested his curiosity. He wants to understand. I think that kind of goes with the second one, as we looked at in John 14. But then also his evangelistic conviction. This is a man who was chosen by Jesus. Of the 11 plus 1 apostles Jesus chose, or 12 plus 1, only one of them failed him, really, and that was Judas. All the others we have good reason to believe, uh, fulfilled their commission. And I want to live with that spirit of faith, that evangelistic conviction, that integrity when it comes to evidence, and that degree of courage. Let's all learn from the Apostle Tom.